Good morning. Today we will be discussing our second reconnaissance mission, the Cavalry Team Area Reconnaissance. We refer to it this way because it is an area of reconnaissance conducted at the team level that is based on U.S. Army Cavalry Scout tactics. Incidentally, Cav Scouts no longer look like this. I know, an enormous disappointment for me too. Generally, they look like this. As stated, area reconnaissance is a form of reconnaissance that focuses on obtaining detailed information about the terrain or enemy activity in a prescribed area. The choice to use a cavalry team area reconnaissance is driven by multiple factors, primarily involving the time available to the team and the nature of the objective. The cavalry team area reconnaissance is best used for objectives that are short duration in which LTIOV is less than 12 hours from gaining visual observation as multiple recon fire teams increases the speed of information collection. Additionally, it is suitable for complex objectives, as these mobile fire teams can work a variety of angles and OPs to ensure full observation. Finally, the cavalry team area reconnaissance is suitable for very large objectives, as soldiers can link up on the far side of the NAI and continue onward movement. However, this disposition should be avoided for objectives that are long duration, in which LTIV is more than 12 hours from gaining visual observation, as there is no deliberate rest plan available. Additionally, it should be avoided on objectives where the risk of compromise is high, as the hasty direct fire plan means that the risk of fratricide is higher if compromised. With that, we'll begin the conduct of the reconnaissance. The cavalry team area reconnaissance task organizes the team into two elements. Fireteam Alpha is composed of the same soldiers that occupy the surveillance site in an area of surveillance. The ATL, SSO, ARTO, and Sagana. Fireteam Bravo is composed of the soldiers that occupy the hide site and is an area the hide site in an area of surveillance. The team leader, RTO, and both SOs. This allows the team to work with the team members that they would in an area of surveillance and provides two FM radios to each fire team. This brings us to our first board. On the right is an image of the elements conducting a reconnaissance of an NAI. On the left are the administrative notes, including the primary tasks of an area reconnaissance and the steps of an area reconnaissance beginning from the team ORP. This board begins with the entire team consolidated in the team ORP. The team leader then directs the team to begin MWE prep. MWE stands for men, weapons, and equipment. Two men at a time can conduct MWE. The fastest way to manage this is to conduct MWE as task organized teams. That is, two men from Fireteam Alpha conduct MWE, then the other team and two in Fireteam Alpha, and then Fireteam Bravo conducts MWE, first as the two men that lead it, and then as the two supporters. Deliberate MWE is a process that should take no more than 15 minutes, the standard being that the two fire teams should be able to deploy from the team ORP 20 minutes after occupying the ORP. This leaves five minutes for five-point contingency plan. The team will carry their rucksacks for the duration of the operation. Thus, there is no ruck plan. The team then begins MWE. MWE stands for men, weapons, and equipment, as we've established. We will not go into the details of MWE in this presentation. For a detailed breakdown, see the Ranger Team Area Reconnaissance video. The team leader now gives a single five-point contingency plan to the ATL. The five-point contingency plan is for the duration of the mission. Five-point contingency plans were covered in depth in the lesson on occupation of the ORP. However, this plan will be slightly different, and thus we will explore it. That said, this five-point will by necessity include actions on compromise. While in the mission sequence, a compromise plan will be briefed at this time, for the sake of clarity, I'll first give the five-point, explain the rest of the mission, and then circle back for a detailed explanation of the compromise plan. The five point from the team leader to the ATL will sound like this. I'm going to reconnoiter the north side of the objective while you reconnoiter the opposite side, which is the south side, in accordance with the op board. I am taking four scouts, myself, the RTO, and both SOs. We will rendezvous with you at the far side rally point, located at grid Echo Juliet 45369845, at the tip of the spur descending from the northwest in four hours. Time now is 1415. RV is 1815. If I do not make the RV point by that time, remain in place and radio me every minute on the minute for five minutes. Then, if I still have not arrived, move to the next checkpoint along the route and set a long hold. Remain there for no more than two hours, radioing me every five minutes. If you still have no contact, radio higher for instructions. 
If we take enemy contact, begin firing in accordance with the engagement priorities given. We will break contact to the far side rally point. Once you have expended one magazine each in your fire team at a rapid rate of fire, break contact to the far side rally point. If the far side rally point is untenable, we will link up at the next checkpoint on our route. If you take contact, we will do the same, expending one magazine per soldier to support you in breaking contact and link up at the far side rally point. If the far side rally point is untenable, we will link up at the next checkpoint along our route. The team leader can also designate, if he, des if he decides to, to link up at the release point or the ORP. However, he should always establish the primary course of action in case the communications plan fails. He can always change this plan via FM as he, ch as he sees fit during actions on. The team is now prepared to depart the ORP. The team leader can choose to split the team now, or if he chooses, the team can move to a predetermined release point and split at that point. In either case, the team splits into fire teams when the team leader directs, but it should be out of sight and ideally out of hearing range of the objective when they do so. If he chooses to split the team at the ORP, the team leader must be extremely confident in his location and the position of the objective relative to the team. Splitting at the ORP will save time, but is less precise than splitting at the release point, and does not provide the same control as utilizing a release point. If the team leader uses a release point, the team will move towards that release point, and therefore the objective, in file. Once the SSO identifies the release point, he halts. The team conducts seals and then pinpoints. The team leader confirms the RP meets his criteria. That is, that the release point has all the characteristics of an ORP and that it can be easily located at night. This is in case the team should need to break contact to the release point instead of the far side rally point. Again, this is the less preferred method as the team may have, had, may have to move back around the objective to continue movement. Once the release point is occupied, the team leader and SSO move towards the objective and identify and confirm that it is the correct objective. The team leader and SSO gather as much PIR from their initial position as possible. If they are able to gather all PIR necessary, then the mission is a success. The team will reconsolidate at the release point and withdraw. More likely than not, this will not occur. In this case, the team leader and SSO move back to the hull. The team leader then indicates to the ATL that the five-point contingency plan is in effect and the two fire teams split. While apart, the recon fire teams gather PIR in salute format. If directed, they should also produce a military sketch of the NAI. This is important for threat-focused NAIs. In other missions, however, such as reconnoitering and HLZ, this may not be necessary. As with the Ranger Team Area Reconnaissance, it is critical to keep the following in mind during the conduct of the reconnaissance. Cloverleaf. The recon fire teams bound back and away from the objective as they move from vantage point to vantage point. Use maximum stealth. Scouts use appropriate IMT for the terrain and vegetation. If we high crawl into a position, we will high crawl back out. Third, use cover and concealment. Scouts use all available cover and concealment to prevent enemy from detecting their movement. Fourth, never parallel the objective. Move around the objective, never parallel to it, in order to avoid detection by enemy forces. Finally, fifth, is standoff. Scouts want to use maximum standoff range from the objective to prevent detection. Use your optics to assist in gathering PIR from an extended distance. Alpha Team is the first team to emplace in position on the NAI. If the team leader decides to, he can hold Bravo Fire Team at the release point until Alpha Fire Team is emplaced. Alpha always emplaces first because they possess the saw gunner. They emplace in a suitable support by fire position and send their grid, as well as the azimuths for their sector of fire. This is indicated by the solid support by fire graphic marked SBF1 on the graphic. This graphic also has a dotted OP position behind it, because the support by fire position is performing as an OP during the interval between their initial placement and the Bravo fire team occupying their OP, OP2, on the opposite side of the NAI. As Bravo fire team moves into position, they radio their grid to Alpha fire team. The Alpha fire team leader, that is, the ATL, then adjusts his team's sectors of fires to provide 15 degrees of offset from the Bravo team's position. Note that, as in the Ranger Team Area Reconnaissance and the Cavalry Team Area Reconnaissance, all control measures and positions belonging to Alpha Team are on one side of the objective and are labeled with odd numbers. All positions belonging to Bravo Team are on the other side of the objective and are labeled with even numbers. This improves battle tracking and prevents confusion during a complex operation. The team may also establish TRPs either prior to the operation in the op or during the operation. 
These TRPs follow the same numbering convention as used in the OPs and support by fire positions. Once Alpha Team has confirmed that their sectors are adjusted to protect Bravo Team, Bravo Team begins to reconnoiter the NAI. They remain in position that they had already occupied, but continue to observe and report on the PIR. When the Bravo Fire Team leader, the, T the TL, decides that the advantage is afforded to the team by that position has been exhausted, he radios the Alpha Fire Team leader and instructs him to displace to a subsequent OP. As Alpha Fire Team Clover leaves to the next position, Bravo Fire Team assumes a support by fire role, switching from the solid OP position at OP2 to the dotted support by fire position there. The team leader establishes Bravo Fire Team sector and waits for Alpha Team to in place. Once Alpha Fire Team has occupied their OP position, OP3, they send their grid to Bravo Fire Team. Bravo Fire Team plots the grid and adjusts their sectors accordingly, again providing at least 15 degrees of offset from the other fire team. Alpha Fire Team will collect until they feel that their position's advantage has been exhausted, and then radio Bravo Fire Team. Alpha then becomes the support by fire position, and Bravo will move to in place at a subsequent OP. This pattern continues, with each team flip-flopping between an OP when covered by the opposite team's support by fire, and being a support by fire while the other team is moving. The general sequence is, a fire team moves to the next position, establishes an OP, and exhausts the advantages of that position. Once, those, once that position's advantages have been exhausted, they direct the other fire team to move to a subsequent OP and convert to a support by fire, and report their sector. Once the other fire team in places as an OP, they adjust the sector, that is, the support by fire team will adjust their sector, and then confirm the shift fire and sector modification, and then await direction from the other team. That other team will exhaust the advantages of their OP, convert to support by fire, and then the other team will move. It is critical to maintain communication and correctly articulate positions during this process to ensure that direct fires are controlled in the event of conflict. At each position, the fire teams should have at least two team members observing the NAI, one team member reporting and recording all information, and one team member pulling rear security. These duties can rotate to prevent eye fatigue and complacency as directed by the fire team leader. Once the team has hit any of the following triggers, they displace to the far side rally point and link up. The team will displace to the far side rally point. If PIR is met, the team runs out of time or reaches LTIOV. No further positions remain to utilize, which is similar to reaching an LOA, or either fire team is compromised. In all cases, the team reconsolidates at the far side rally point, or whatever rally point is dictated by the team leader. Ideally, these rally points meet all the same criteria as the release point, and thus are easy to locate and allow the team a good position from which to reconsolidate and defend if necessary. If the team has met the PIR, the team leader and ATO compare what they saw. If there are no major discrepancies, the team reports the information and displaces. If there are major discrepancies, for example, the team leader saw an armored fighting vehicle and the ATL did not, then the team leader can choose to switch the two SOs in his team for the ARTO and saw gunner. The two teams then reconnoiter the opposite side of the objective that they originally did. They switch subordinate team members, since those team members already know the routes to the best observation positions on either side of the objective. The reconnaissance continues until one of the above four triggers is met. If, instead, the team ran out of time or reaches LTIV, they compare information, the team leader makes a call on what was or was not present on the objective, and the team reports. If the team exhausted all positions on either side of the objective, they again can switch subordinate team members and reconnoitre the other side of the objective until they run out of time, meet the PIR, or are compromised. Finally, if the team is compromised during their reconnaissance, they execute a compromise plan. If compromised, the fire team that was compromised can conduct either an Aussie peel, a center peel, or a battle drill 3 to break contact to the RP or the far side rally point or the ORP, depending on the team leader's direction. The fire team that is supporting begins to fire at a rapid rate of fire, each man expending one full magazine in accordance with their designated sectors and engagement priority until the compromised team is out of contact. The supporting fire team then breaks contact using the techniques above. The team should develop pro words to determine which location they will link up at, either the release point, far side rally point, or ORP. The team leader should make this decision, but the primary course of action should be established in the five-point contingency plan in case of a communications equipment failure. In any case, once the team has occupied a halt, either at the far side rally point, marked rally at the top of the graphic here, or at the RP or ORP, 
the team consolidates and reports all information. If it is unsafe to do so at this location, the team leader can opt to displace one major terrain feature or a thousand meters to a secure location from which to disseminate information and report to the platoon leader. If the team cannot establish radio contact with the PL, the team leader disseminates all information gathered to the team in salute format, and each member copies the military sketch. This is time consuming, but if the team cannot report due to electronic jamming of comms or due to the headquarters element being out of comms or killed, this analog format for PIR delivery can be physically delivered to higher echelons following the no comms plan. As a final option, if the team leader is confident that all information has been reported via FM prior to the team reconsolidating at the far side rally point, he can direct his team to move his two separate fire teams to the next objective or checkpoint to minimize their signature as they travel away from the NAI. In any case, the team leader leads the team into the next mission, or the team moves to the extraction point. This concludes the mission. In conclusion, this brief has addressed the purpose of an area reconnaissance, the task organization of a cavalry team area reconnaissance, determining when to use a cavalry team area reconnaissance, the conduct of this reconnaissance, and direct fire control in a cavalry team area reconnaissance, and finally, the compromise plan. The following resources were used in preparing this presentation. Send any questions or comments to charlietrooptactics at outlook.com.